In this question, the given quadratic equation has equal roots. This means the discriminant b squared minus 4ac must be equals to 0, where a equals k, b equals negative 2k plus 6, and c equals 16. Substituting these values into the formula and simplifying the expression, we get k squared minus 10k plus 9 equals 0. We can factor the expression as k minus 1 times k minus 9. Thus, the two possible values of k are 1 or 9. In this question, the given expression is equivalent to 2 times 1 plus 3x raised to the negative half. We will use the binomial expansion to expand 1 plus 3x to the negative half. The first term is 1. The second term is negative half times 3x equals negative 3 over 2 times x. The third term is negative half times negative 3 half over 1 times 2, multiplied by 3x squared, which equals 27 over 8 times x squared. The fourth term is the product of negative half, negative 3 half and negative 5 half, divided by 1 times 2 times 3, multiplied by 3x cubed, which equals negative 135 over 16 times x cubed. Since the original expression is multiplied by 2, we multiply the entire expansion by 2. This simplifies to 2 minus 3x plus 27 over 4 times x squared minus 135 over 8 times x cubed. For the binomial expansion to be valid, absolute value of 3x must be less than 1. Dividing by 3, the absolute value of x must be less than 1 third. In this question, we are working with vectors. Vector AB equals vector OB minus vector OA. Rearranging, we have vector OA equals vector OB minus vector AB. Substituting the values, we get 6i minus AJ. The length of vector OA is 3 root 5. Using the formula for the length of vector, we get 3 root 5 equals square root of 6 squared plus negative A squared. Simplifying, we get A squared equals 9 and thus a equals 3. The unit vector parallel to vector OA is found by dividing vector OA by its length. Simplifying, we get 2 over root 5 times i minus 1 over root 5 times j, which is the unit vector parallel to vector OA. In the given polynomial f of x, p, and q are constant. The derivative of f of x is 3 px squared plus 2 qx minus 37. When f prime of x is divided by x plus 2, the remainder is f prime of negative 2, which equals negative 33. Simplifying and rearranging the equation, we get q equals 3p minus 1. Since x plus 5 is a factor of f of x, f of negative 5 equals 0. Simplifying the expression, we get negative 125p plus 13, q plus 185 equals 0. Substituting q equals 3p minus 1 into this equation, we get negative 86p plus 172 equals 0. Solving for p, we get p equals 2. Substituting p equals 2 into q equals 3p minus 1, then we get q equals 5. Now f of x becomes 2x cubed plus 5x squared minus 37x minus 60. We will use synthetic division. The coefficients of the polynomials are 2, 5, negative 37, and negative 60. Performing synthetic division by negative 5. Write down the first coefficient, 2. Multiplying 2 by negative 5 gives negative 10. Add this to next coefficient, 5 gives negative 5. Then multiply by negative 5 gives 25. Add this to next coefficient. We get negative 12. Multiply by negative 5 gives 60. Add this to the last coefficient gives 0 as the remainder. So, the result of division is f of x equals x plus 5 times 2 x squared minus 5 x minus 12. Now we factor the quadratic part. We need two numbers that multiply to give negative 24 and add to give negative 5 to rewrite the middle term. We can rewrite the middle term as negative 8x plus 3x. Factoring by grouping gives 2x times x minus 4 plus 3 times x minus 4. Finally, factoring out x minus 4, we get f of x equals x plus 5 times x minus 4 times 2x plus 3. When f of x equals 0, each factor equals 0.
So the solutions are x equals negative 5, 4, and negative 3 over 2. In this question, the formula for f is 3 over 20 r squared. The rate of change of f with respect to r is negative, 3 over 10 r cubed. We are given that dr over dt is 0 0.7. To find df over dt, we use the chain rule. df over dr times dr over dt. Substituting the values, we get negative 3 over 10 r cubed times 0 0.7. We need to find the rate of change of f when r equals 2.8. Substituting r equals 2.8 into the equation, we calculate df over dt equals 0 0.00957. In this question, we are asked to estimate the roots of the logarithmic equation by drawing a line. We will manipulate the logarithmic equation to compare with y equals x plus 2 raised to the negative 4x plus 1. Log base 2 of 8 minus 3x equals negative 4x. In exponent form, 2 raised to the negative 4x equals 8 minus 3x. Then we divide both sides of the equation by 2. Finally, adding x to both sides, we have x plus 2 raised to the negative 4x plus 1 equals 4 minus half x. The left side of the equation represents the equation of the given curve. The right side is equation of the straight line. We use y equals 4 minus negative half x to find two points in order to draw a straight line. The y-intercept is 4. So, one point is 0, 0,4. When x is 6, y equals 1. Another point is 6, 1. We can join these two points to draw a straight line. y equals 4 minus half x. The root of the equation can be found where the curve and the straight line intersect. By estimating the intersection points on the graph, we find that the values of x are approximately negative 0, 0.9 and 2.7. The asymptote parallel to y-axis is a value of x where the function is undefined. In this case, the vertical asymptote is negative 5 over 4, as this is where the function becomes undefined. To find the equation of normal line, we first need to calculate the gradient of the tangent line to the curve. Using the quotient rule, derivative of y gives a fraction, where the numerator is 2x times 4x plus 5, minus 4 times x squared, minus 1, and the denominator is 4x plus 5 squared. Substitute x equals negative 1 to find the gradient of tangent at this point. Then, dy over dx equals minus 2. The gradient of the line L is 1 over 2, which is negative reciprocal of the tangent line. Next, we find the coordinates of the point on the curve where when x equals negative 1. Substituting x equals negative 1 to the equation of the curve, y equals negative 1 squared minus 1, divided by 4 times negative 1 plus 5. Since the numerator is 0, we get y equals 0. So, the point is negative 1, 0, and the gradient is half. Using these values, we can write the equation of the normal line. y equals half times x plus 1. In part c, the normal line L meets the curve at another point. We set the equation of the normal line equal to the equation of the curve. Factorize x squared minus 1 on the right-hand side, and cancel x plus 1 from both sides, since we are looking for a point where x does not equal negative 1. Now, we have half equals x minus 1 divided by 4x plus 5. Solving the equation gives x equals negative 7 over 2. To find the coordinate of y, we substitute the value of x in the equation of the normal line. The value of y is negative 5 over 4. So, the coordinates of d are negative 7 over 2 comma, negative 5 over 4. This question involves a geometric series. The sum of the first two terms, a plus ar, equals 360. The sum of the second and third terms, ar plus ar squared, is 288. Factoring out r from the second equation, we get r times a plus ar equals 288. From the first equation, a plus ar is 360, then r is 288 over 360. So, r equals 4 over 5 in simplest form. We substitute r equals 4 over 5 in the first equation to find a. Solving the equation, we get the first term equals 200. 
using the formula for the general term of a geometric series, un equals 200 times 4 over 5 raised to the n minus 1. This geometric series is convergent because the absolute value of r is less than 1. The formula for the sum to infinity of a geometric sequence is a over 1 minus r. Substituting a equals 200 and r equals 4 over 5, the sum to infinity is 1000. In part d, we have to find the least value of n for which the sum to n terms is greater than 978. The formula is a times 1 minus r to the n divided by 1 minus r. We know that a over 1 minus r is 1000. Dividing both sides of the inequality by 1000 and subtract 1, we get negative 0.8 to the n is greater than negative 0.022. Multiplying negative 1 flips the inequality. Taking logarithm to both sides, we have n times log 0.8 is less than log 0.022. Since log 0.8 is negative, dividing both sides by this value flips the inequality. Now we get n is greater than 17.1. Since n must be an integer, the least value of n is 18. In this question, we need to find the exact area of the shaded region between the curve and the straight line. First, we find the y-coordinates of points A and B. To find the y-coordinate of point A, substitute x equals negative 1 into curve equation. So, y equals negative 2 e to the negative 3 plus 4. To find the y-coordinate of point B, substitute x equals 0. We get y equals negative 2 e to the 0 plus 4. Since e to the 0 is 1, y equals 2. So, the coordinates of B are 0, 2. The area under the curve from x equals negative 1 to x equals 0 is found by integrating the curve function. Integral of the curve function with respect to x is negative 2 over 3 times e to the 3x plus 4x. Substituting x equals 0 gives negative 2 over 3, and substituting x equals negative 1 gives negative 2 over 3 times e to the negative 3 minus 4. Simplifying, we have 10 plus 2 e to the negative 3 divided by 3. This represents the area under the graph from x equals negative 1 to x equals 0. A trapezium is formed between the line segment AB and x-axis. The formula for the area of the trapezium is half times negative 2e to the negative 3 plus 4 plus 2, the sum of parallel sides times 1, the perpendicular distance between parallel sides. Simplifying this expression, we get negative e to the negative 3 plus 3. The area of shaded region is the area under the curve minus area of the trapezium. Simplifying the expression, we get the exact area of shaded region 1 plus 5e to the negative 3 divided by 3. In this question, we are working with a pyramid ABCDV that has a rectangular base and equal slant edges AV, BV, CV, and DV. The vertex V is directly above the center of the base, which we call X. First, we calculate the length of VA. The diagonal AC of the rectangular base equals the square root of 2X squared plus X squared. Solving this, we get AC equals root 5 times X. AX is half of AC. The length of AX is root 5 over 2 times X. Now, look at triangle AVX. Angle VXA is 90 degrees, and it is given that angle VAX is 45 degrees. Since triangle VAX is an isosceles right triangle, AX and VX are equal. Therefore, VX equals root 5 over 2 times X. By Pythagoras' theorem, AV squared equals AX squared plus VX squared. Substituting and simplifying the equation, we get AV equals root 10 over 2 times X. Since VX is the height of the pyramid, we have done part B. In part C, we have to find angle VBA. Assume M is the midpoint of AB. Since VA and VB are equal, VM is the perpendicular bisector of AB. In right triangle VMB, cosine of angle VBA equals MB over VB. So, angle VBA is the cosine inverse of MB over VB. We substitute MB equals X and VB equals root 10 over 2 times X in the expression. Use a calculator to get angle VBA equals 50.8 degrees. In part D, we need to find the obtuse angle between the plane AVC and the plane BVD. 
This is the same as finding angle AXB, the angle between two diagonals. In right angle triangle AXM, we can find the angle AXM, which is half of the angle AXB. Sine this angle is the ratio of AM to AX. Taking the sine inverse, we get the value of half of angle AXB. Multiplying the result by 2, we get angle AXB equals 126.9 degrees. Finally, we need to find the value of X when the volume of the pyramid is 9 root 5. The formula for the volume of pyramid is 1 third times base area times height. Base area is 2X times X, and the height is root 5 over 2 times X. Solving the equation, we get X cubed equals 27. Taking the cube root, X equals 3. In this question, we prove two trigonometric identities and find the coordinates of a stationary point P by differentiating function. First, we begin with cos 2a, which is the same as cos a plus a. Expanding this using trigonometric identities, we get cos squared a minus sine squared a. Since sine squared a is the same as 1 minus cos squared a, we get cos 2a equals 2 cos squared a minus 1. In part b, we substitute 2a for a in the previous identity, which gives cos 4a equals 2 cos squared 2a minus 1. Rearranging the equation, we get cos 4a minus 1 divided by 2 equals cos squared 2a. We know from part a that cos 2a equals 2 cos squared a minus 1. Substituting this into cos squared 2a, we get 2 cos squared a minus 1 whole squared. Now, we have proved the identities. For part c, we are given a function. We can substitute 2 cos squared x minus 1 whole squared with cos squared 2x. Then, the expression becomes y equals sine 2x over 2 plus cos squared 2x over 2 plus 1 over 8. Now, we need to differentiate this function with respect to x. Derivative of sine 2x is 2 cos 2x. Using the chain rule, Derivative of cos squared 2x is 2 cos 2x times negative sine 2x, and derivative of constant is 0. At the stationary point, dy over dx equals 0. Simplifying the expression, we have cos 2x minus 2 sine 2x cos 2x equals 0. Factoring out cos 2x, the product of cos 2x and 1 minus 2 sine 2x equals 0. This gives two possible conditions. However, cos 2x equals 0 has no solution within the range of 2x between 0 and pi over 3. The other condition is 1 minus 2 sine 2x equals 0. This simplifies to sine 2x equals 1 over 2. Solving this equation gives 2x equals pi over 6, so x equals pi over 12. This is the only value of x which lies between 0 and pi over 6. Then we have to evaluate the value of y. We know that sine 2x equals half. Half of this value is 1 over 4. Cos 2x is 0, so the term involving cos 2x vanishes. Thus, the value of y is 1 over 4 plus 1 over 8 equals 3 over 8. So, the coordinates of p are pi over 12 and 3 over 8.